Do you have a whippet or a few and you think you're spoiling them too much? Well, don't judge yourself. I know all of mine are spoiled, that's not new to me. But a while ago I set to think about all of their individual needs and to what extent we actually spoil them. On the scale of 1 to 10, I would rate it at 25. If you want a whippet and you'd like to prepare for your loyal servant duties or you already own whippets and you want to know you're not alone in overworking yourself for free, this video is for you. If you're new here, I'm Adi and I've had whippets for 15 years. I'm currently owned by seven of them and I make breed specific videos to help existing and future whippet owners. If that's your type of content or you want to learn more about the breed, you can subscribe and join our growing whippet family. Starting with the obvious, we have way more dog beds than whippets in this house. Cave beds, donut beds, regular beds, beds on top of beds, and beds under chairs. They're all around the house, but especially in our living room, which is the main whippet domain. That's because everyone has a favorite spot and we love to spend money apparently, but also because, well, just because. And they still prefer our seats, but thankfully we have enough dog beds to sit on in dire situations. Talking about beds, normal dogs are grateful to have only one and they appreciate it. But in this house of special needs, one of these beds placed on the floor, which by the way is currently heated, is not enough. They prefer them on top of another bed or mattress and sometimes that's not good enough either. Not to mention, if it's sunny outside and the sunshine doesn't hit a bed, it's a no-no. What a disgrace, the servants forgot to position the sun correctly. Whippets like soft things and that includes fleece blankets, we have around 50 at least. Especially in winter, even though the house is warm, we walk around covering whippets with them for additional comfort, especially if their ears are a bit cold which indicates they need an extra layer. We also do this in hopes they will drop us a 5-star rating one day. This day is yet to come. Speaking of blankets, they all have a preferred spot to sleep in at night or a preferred human to sleep next to. With that come more demands, like sleeping under the blanket, but I wish it was that simple. They like to crawl in and out and then back under. And you guessed it, they need assistance. We are poked with a wet noodle nose on the face several times per night, which is a last warning to lift the covers for them to get in, or else we're punished with endless screaming. We're so well trained to do that we don't even remember waking up. This probably interrupts our sleep cycle, but try and explain it to a spoiled whippet. More often than not, especially in winter, we wake up freezing cold because a spoiled thief stole all the covers. Or we have neck and back pain in the morning, which is the aftermath of being squeezed in an uncomfortable position by a whippet who takes more space in the bed than an elephant would. Occasionally they look uncomfortable, even though they probably aren't, and it's our job to fix the problem. For example, flipping their ears if they're not positioned correctly, or if they look like they're lying uncomfortably or at a spot that doesn't seem suitable for a whippet. Then we gently reposition them. Not that they aren't perfectly capable of doing it themselves, however, we're working hard for the Employee of the Month award. Same goes for if their favorite spot is taken by another whippet. Occasionally we'd help them find another one. Not that they don't have four legs and a brain to do it on their own, but yeah, you get the point. Skylar has this frustrating habit of whining when she wants help to go under the covers. The help is only accepted when it comes from my mom. If another servant dares to assist, we're all punished with louder whining. And since I mentioned her, some mornings her stomach would rumble before breakfast and she won't eat her regular food, unless we offer an appetizer and a starter prior to the main meal. 
every once in a while will free a spot for a whippet. For example, Eris likes to sleep in my closet, which happens to be where I like to sit occasionally. If I've taken that seat, she demands I make space for her. And while I love to share my seat with her, there are times when I prefer to sit alone due to muscle pain or whatever, so I go elsewhere. Or they look too comfortable on one of our seats and we look for another. Whippets won't lie on the floor, except if they're like Eris and Skylar, who only do it as some sort of a protest. Or the bare minimum would be a carpet. Then they can lie there, as it's not totally insulting and uncomfortable. But even then, it will be a temporary charging spot and not a place to have a good snooze. Because of this, I don't even try to ask them to sit on the floor. All my dogs know this command, but will not sit unless it's grassy or soft under their butt. When we go to a show, we bring half the house with us. Normal dogs usually have a crate, a bed maybe, and a water bowl. And they're happy and grateful. Here, this bare minimum will get us fired. We bring a crate, food and water, several beds for in and outside the crate, a few blankets, pillows, a tent if it's outdoors for the whippets to be loose off leash, but also toys and chew toys, and we buy more of these at the show. Not to mention all the toys they have. Two large bins in the living room and three large bags with toys they abducted and abandoned in the garden. And of course I remind them how beautiful and cute they are every hour of the day. If a normal person hears me, they'll think I've totally lost my mind. We also have this thing, when we find them so cute, we sometimes call them poor things because of it. I don't even know why. They're so adorable sometimes, they make us feel sorry for no reason at all. Please tell me we're not the only crazies. All this effort and they still look at us like we forgot to do half of our duties for the day and we are a failure and disgrace. In a perfect world, all whippets will have an individual slave and account manager assigned to go after them and ensure they're comfortable and warm enough their bed has sufficient amount of filling, it's positioned correctly with enough UV rays, and who offers them meals of choice whenever they want. Yeah, what else can I say? They're whippets after all, not some... dogs. It's in their nature to be spoiled. But in all seriousness, as spoiled as they are, I'm uncompromising when it comes to the rules of the house. So luckily, all of this attention doesn't lead to lack of discipline and behavioral issues. These were all the things I could think of at the top of my head, but there are many more, I assure you, which means there might be part two later in time. So have a lovely weekend and a fantastic week afterwards, and I will see you very soon with a new video. Bye-bye!